praying for the week and you know we just want to give I just because I heard about tithes you know and then she started giving more and more and more and more and more you know and her husband was supposed to be the bad guy in the family drunk would never afford anything God blessed him gave them even a house and she, she attributes it to her faithfulness in paying tithes God's word is not true he said prove me in this and see Bring your tithes and offerings and I will open the windows of heaven and shower out my blessing. So let's get ready to receive as we give. Let's stand together. Father, we thank you for the privilege, the honor we can never outgive God. Lord, we thank you for giving us this honor to bring our tithes and offerings to you today. And Lord, we thank you. This is for us, for our good, for our health, for our well-being because we don't want to hold in our bags. Oh, Jesus, but you will provide, you will bless, oh God. And we thank you now for your faithfulness in blessing us this week as we have come to give our tithes and offerings. We receive it in Jesus' mighty name. God bless us as we give. Praise to the Lord, to the Lamb, to the King. message or about asking for the ancient parts and I wanted to take you back to the ancient parts you know somebody said to me and I, I quoted this before you are the, of the old school and I said no I'm of the Bible school if you stick to the Bible and the Bible is an ancient book by the way yeah written over a period of uh, 1500 years years ancient book and at the end of the day that word has stood the test now I know in every culture there are cultural upheavals that tells us oh we got to look at it uh, 
not the way our forefathers looked at it, but God's word never changes. The principles, our adorations, worship, when God says clap, it means that we still clap. When God says raise your hand, it means we still raise our hand. When God says when you receive the Holy Spirit and you speak in other tongues, you will speak in other tongues. But the modern day church doesn't think so, unfortunately. And we miss our lives and we miss our home. But at the end of the day, we are going to be judged. This ancient book, many history will tell you, many politicians, political parties try to destroy uh, this book. You know, in Sri Lanka during the riots, uh, one pediatrician gave his life to serve God full time in ministry because his house was burnt, gutted, everything, all the precious things, photos, I mean, what the hell dear to them were all burned. And when he walked into his room, one thing that was not burnt amazingly, flung the dust out, picked up the word of God. He said, this is the miracle. This word has to be true. And gave his life to serve God full time in ministry. God's word will stand. And by the way, at the end of the day, there are books going to be open. And the one book that we are going to face before God is the Bible. They're going to be judged by the word of God. So can I encourage you to live by the word? Because that's the word that's going to, at the end of the day, judge us. Talking about books. And this is a week on news. Uh, they were telling us that uh, now looking at the screen for our children is not that healthy as taking a literal book and turning the pages and reading. It is good for the mind. And kids learn more by the books. I'm thinking to myself, uh, maybe the book industry is kind of uh, putting some pressure here on the media and try to get at them. But no, I think there is some sense in that. I've got over 1,000 books uh, uh, in this iPad. I must have paid about $10,000 in this little small device. Over a thousand books. Can I say to you, I hardly dig into those books on the iPad. But if I had them, and I'm still, Molly will tell you, I have books stacked up by the side of my bed. I have books in the office. I have books under the bed. When I need something, I can look at the iPad, but I go look at these books. I can underline them. And I don't know, I learn more. I thought I'm old school. But now they're saying, kids that read books, and I think there are going to be more books published, learn better. Stays in the mind, no distraction. Wow, call it old school. I was going to preach on that. But on Friday, you know, the Lord changed my message because I'm getting this call and people, you know, wanting counsel. And one, one guy called, Pastor, this pastor has messed up. And, you know, I, I don't know what, what to do. And a lot of people are leaving the church. And, and uh, people called here, wanted, wanted to have counsel. I said, you can't. The only time I can do it on, on Sunday after the morning service. If you come, we can probably make some arrangements and, and do something. And then the Holy Spirit quickened to my heart. God said, get ready. 2024, you haven't just made a statement there. I gave you that. Get ready for increase. Hallelujah. Turn to somebody and say, God's going to give us increase. God's going to give us increase for sure. Hallelujah. God's going to give us increase. Amen. It's interesting, when God came to Adam and Eve, He told them in Genesis 1.28, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. And of course, all that increase about fish and land and animals and so forth. And of course, reading that, the immediate text would tell us God is talking about you know, procreation. Somebody who had 10 kids and somebody said, hey, listen, God didn't give you the whole responsibility of populating the earth. As we read that, we probably think of it literally and uh, they think about that. But uh, if that was implied, and I believe that was implied, but there is more to the increase. And that increase has to do with every part of your being and my being. I would have to agree with uh, Bailey Connolly who says, when God told them to be fruitful and increase, it had to do with their emotions, it had to do with their spiritual life, it had to do with their influence, it had to do with their understanding and everything else about them. Because let's face it, I mean, we can't go to work if we're not healthy in our body, if we're not healthy in our mind, if we're not healthy emotions, in our emotional well-being. Now they talk about a lot, you know, about inter emotional intellect, inter emotional well-being. And we've got to be totally all-rounded, completely increasing every part of our being. 
Amen. Every part of our being. God wants to give us more inner peace, more wisdom, more spiritual discernment and sensitivity, more strength, more influence, more joy, more faith, more love. And every one of these you would find in the Bible increase. Increase our love, increase our faith, increase our joy. More favor, more material resources because probably the more we have, the more we can give. Hallelujah. You didn't like that, did you? The more we can give, Turn to somebody and say, the more I have, the more I can give. Get that giving out. Get that giving out. Isaiah 40, 29 says, He gives strength to the weary and increase the power of the weak. The weak can say, I'm strong. Glory. Luke 17, 5, the apostles, the disciples said to the, to the Lord Jesus, increase our faith. Increase our faith. You would think that I mean, why would they need an increase of their faith? They have the master working with them, but they see Jesus doing things. I mean, they wanted Jesus to teach them to pray like John taught his disciples. And so they were on a quest for increase. Hallelujah. On a quest for increase. 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 12 says, And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love towards one another and towards all men, even as we do towards you. Pass it on, Paul says. Proverbs 1.5 says, A wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. This morning, I like to use the text, Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Acts 9, verse 31. Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened. Living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. I'd like us to observe, increase is not automatic. There are certain things that precedes increase. Everything that is said before the last statement, and they increased in numbers. So let's unpack this verse. Number one, the church throughout, that statement throughout, is interesting. It speaks of increase. This is an increased statement. Uh, Judea, Galilee, Samaria enjoyed a time of peace. Now, if you go back in time, Jesus told them in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, don't leave Jerusalem. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall receive power and you shall be witnesses of me in Judea, Samaria, and in the uttermost parts of the world. What happened? That now, in Acts chapter 9, 31, there are, it says here, the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace. Now, if you read Acts chapter 9, it talks about Saul, who became Paul. This guy was a terror. I mean, he would slaughter people. One commentator said, Saul, called Paul, became so compassionate that he talked so much about widows and orphans is because he created them widows and orphans. He took the husband and killed him. He took the young men and killed him. And so he feels for the widows and uh, the orphans. But he terrorized the church. I mean, he had letters going even overseas uh, to murder people. But he meets Jesus on the way in Acts chapter 9, converted by the power of the Holy Spirit. Falls from his horse. And he's saved. Then you come to the end of Acts chapter 9 and verse 31. And it says here, the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace. Enjoyed the time of peace. And during this time of persecution, Jesus told them, go, preach the gospel. Judea said, they went. But then persecution broke out. And everything was stalled. I mean, they're hiding for the Guys have been killed. Women wouldn't go out. So what did the church do in the one that are left? Probably they're praying. God. Please, how can we go out? Give us an opportunity. Give us a moment, oh God. Give us, give us, give us. And lo and behold, the killer gets arrested by God. He's saved. And now they're enjoying a time of peace. And now, where is the gospel going? The same place that Jesus told them it should go. Judea, Samaria. And of course, you read on, it went to the uttermost parts of the world. After Pentecost, they went and they were stopped. And that will happen again and again. Stop and examine. Every revival came out of something bad that was happening in the world. That's why writers are saying God has to do something according to the 
history of revival, when bad things happen, when there's no hope there politically, when there's no hope in our schools, I mean, come on, our young children are running among 10 to 16 years, they're robbing houses. I mean, they're so much so that they had to say, no buying machetes or knives. I thought they couldn't buy knives. I don't know where they're getting knives. I mean, I got a big sword in the, in the ceiling in Clayton because I, I bought it from the Chinese shop. I must have paid five bucks, the two dollar, five bucks, a sharp sword. I can take somebody's head off with that. We brought it for a skit, a drama. I could buy it in the Chinese two dollar shop. You couldn't get it. And so they have to now legislate that children under 16, you can't buy a knife. I didn't think you can buy a knife. But apparently, you can import these knives and you could have it. And so now they put a band on it. I don't know, but if I was a young guy, I would be laughing, I don't know, through what. Because if I want to get something, and if I had that murderous heart in me, I don't need a knife. Don't forget we had guns before. Yeah? We had guns before. Now we don't have guns. You will find somebody, sinfulness within you will tell you somehow. If there is no knife, there can be something that they can take and sharpen in their house and do damage and kill and go rob people. You can take an axe, no binding of axes. You can take one of those big spikes. I mean, I've got a tool that is so sharp, it's got a long blade. You can take that and you can buy these from Bunnings, by the way. Hello, whom are we fooling? Whom are we fooling? But the truth is, there's unrest in our communities. And all I'm telling you, unless God's people rise and the church rise and we get these young people, hallelujah, we are going to kind of, uh, this nation is going to experience havoc. Rise up, people, because you are not safe. I'm not safe. Our cars are not safe. I was telling somebody, better buy an old bomb. But that doesn't you get caught on the road because it's not roadworthy. Otherwise, I will buy an old bomb and put a big metal bar so if somebody comes and knocks me, their car will get damaged, not my car. But you can't drive that too. And so, it, I mean, these are terrible times. Terrible times. But notice when they enjoy this time of peace and still in what is happening, you and I are still privileged living in this country. We can still open our mouth and talk. We can still lay hands on people and pray. We can still invite people during this time of peace. Let's maximize on this time. But you would find out that after every revival, after every major bad thing happened, revival broke out, right? And things happened. People, ministries were started. They went evangelizing. Bible schools were started. God just did an amazing thing. And of course, you would find a great proportion backslid out after revival. But the remnant, the remnant did so much. And I believe God will pick a remnant again and He will pour, cause His Holy Spirit to come upon them and He will use them with great power and authority in the name of Jesus. And so that's what I see happening, amen, what God was doing here in Acts chapter 9. He was storing the church. So the church is back on its feet, doing as Jesus said, glory to God. In peaceful times, the seed of God's word must be sown. And let's not just dilly-dally, hallelujah, don't let the devil fool you. You know, I mean, don't let him get you working, 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 that you have no time for God, you have no time for your children. Today's paper said, you know, they don't want to pass this bill for, you know, because more than half the percent of MPs have got investment properties. And because they're talking about stopping investment properties and the MPs would have to go bust. Think about it. What's happening today? Doing something. In peaceful times, the seed must be sown. Amen. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. Young people, can I say to you, your best time is when you are young. You can absorb your daring, your bold, your courageous. You don't care about tomorrow. Every terrorist group, if you read any articles on terrorism, they would never pick anybody over 40. Never. Because you don't have it in you to be that terrorist. Can I say to you, Jesus picked disciples, somebody said, under 30 years of age. Because you can take a young person and he's daring, he's willing, he won't worry about eating, he'll just go for it. Young people, don't waste your time, don't fool around because God can do exploits through your life. Just get a girlfriend, get married, but give your life to Jesus. These are the best days of your life. And I think Ecclesiastes told us that, right? Remember your creator in the days of your youth before the days of trouble come. What God establishes in your life. Susie had shared at the lighthouse uh, 
some big ladies meeting she had and you know I was told that she's talking about me went to Clayton this morning and she's talking about me either she didn't sprint chick or she didn't just happen to be you know soothing the preacher because she went to university in fact she I, I told you what she did in university to challenge even the scientists who tried to say that there is no God in her paper it didn't happen by chance Susie was brought up by Molly and me, and, and, and we took them. Uh, if 10 o'clock was service, they were with us in the community center, putting out the child. I mean, sweeping the place at 8.30 in the morning. We were the last to leave the church, and we took them Sunday morning. We took them Sunday night. Uh, we took them Bible study. We took them primary. We took them on picnics. Uh, we took them on camps. Uh, wherever we went, uh, ah, hallelujah, our children had to follow. Like Mary had a little lamb, uh, and the lamb had to follow. They had to follow. You don't grow children by bringing them once a week. No, you don't. You don't. Though if you go to the gym, you know. If you don't go to the gym on a regular basis, you will get a few lumps and bumps and that's it. You will never build a body. You will never come to anything good. And so it is with us. We will never come to anything good by just coming once a week on a Sunday and expect to raise mighty giants from God. You've got to be joking. It will never happen. For yourself and for your children. I said this in Cleveland. I'm telling you, Mali will tell you, almost revival broke out. We were praying for people. That's why I got late even to come here. God was touching people. Every request, Pastor, I want to increase in God. 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 Increase, increase, increase. The peace is a condition of freedom from disturbance, whether outwardly, as used here to describe the church or inwardly, personal inner peace of the individual saint. That's what they enjoy, that peace. And I believe 2024 is going to be a great time of increase throughout the church, not just our church. Throughout the church. Even Clayton this morning, there were, you know, somebody was working at the Monash uh, University came and they said, you've got to come next Sunday. Yes, I will come, I will come. I will come next Sunday too. Because she heard me, she didn't hear my daughter, Susie. She probably might like her because she's young. But how true it is that God wants throughout every church to catch the fire and run with every church throughout Judea, Samaria, and it started spreading to the uttermost parts of the world. Glory to God. It's time to sow the seed. And I believe, as Jesus said, both the sower and the reaper can reap at the same time. This is going to be a great time. I believe God just quickened to my heart that our latter days will be better than our former days. Amen. Hallelujah. Our latter days, so don't look back and say, wasted time. Forget about the days. Say, God, what can you do with this old guy? You know, I'm looking now and saying, now, I'll be 70 in a few weeks' time. I said, God, 70, 10 years will just fly. 10 years will just fly. And I can count it on my fingers probably. Already nearly two months have gone from this year. It's almost gone. What would I do, God? What would you do? Just do. I need you to do something with my latter days and my former days. But God is going to do it. Amen. Keep praying. Keep seeking God. Because God wants all. All. Secondly, during the time of peace, they were strengthened or being built up. I like this word, built up, because it's the same word that is used to build a building and edifies a house. Romans 14 verse 19 says, Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Be built up. Do what is necessary. Do what it takes. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 10 8 says, So even if I boast somewhat freely about the authority the Lord gave us for building you up rather than tearing you down, I will not be ashamed of it. God called me to build you up. Hallelujah. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 11 says, Therefore encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. A famous Sunday school chorus, we would sing, Building up the temple, building up the temple, building up the temple of the Lord. Building up the temple of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are called to build. You know, it is said that if you want to make it through the revelations, talking about the rapture and, you know, be in heaven, you've got to make it through the book of Jude. In other words, Jude gives us some very practical, basic Christian experiences or knowing and living. 
for God now before we can even think about a rapture. So read the book of Jude. It's only one chapter. If you can read Jude and understand Jude and make it through Jude, you are ready for revelation. And in fact, Jude 20 says, But you, dear friends, by building yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, now, who knows about praying in the Spirit? Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, he who speaks in an unknown tongue, what? Edifies himself, builds himself up. And Jude is saying the same thing, by the way. Pentecost weekend is coming soon, of course, but before that, the Pentecost prayer camp is going to be great. I believe there's going to be an outpouring. I'm just giving my own life and say, God, I'm hungry. I'm on a quest to seek more for you. But building ourselves in the Holy Spirit, Hallelujah. Being built up comes from that Greek word, akadomio, which means uh, literally to build, construct, or erect a dwelling, to build a house figuratively. It means to edify. To edify means to instruct and improve, especially in moral and religious knowledge. And we can go on and on that every aspect of the human personality, the human being, in our relationship with God and relationship with one another and the world, God wants to build us up. He wants to make us strong because only the strong can help the weak. Only the strong can go out and face the challenges that are out there. Otherwise, we'll crumble. May God build us up. May God build us up. Hallelujah. Yes, and then thirdly, during the time of peace, they not only help build each other up, we read here, they lived in the fear of the Lord. Going on in the fear, going on in the fear of the Lord, the Bible tells us. You are here this morning because you fear the Lord. You fear the Lord. You came to church because you fear the Lord. You're not here because of Pastor Sergi. God help you. You'll be disappointed. But you're here because the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves. That's a command. That's a law. I fear God. I fear God. That's why I come to church. That's why I come to church. I fear Him. I love Him too much to disobey Him. I fear Him. I fear Him. The church had seen what the forces of darkness could do. They are seen. You know, you read in Acts chapter 5 after the murder of Ananias and Sapphira because of lying. Great fear fell upon the church and outside the church. Always when things happen, fear grips our heart. I'm not talking about a terrified fear. Nobody's frightened of God. God doesn't want us to be fearful. Oh, I'm fearful. Of no. He's allowed us to walk into His presence and say, God, I love you. I revere you. That's the kind of thing. I, I appreciate you. I fear you. I want to obey you. I want to obey you. You may say, what if I don't obey God? Well, consequences are there. I shared last Sunday, I said, you know, when the tsunami hit, I went to Batiklo soon after that in January with Sudhi, and, you know, the church was filled with people. Kids were crying. Because the kids were sent to church and the parents stayed at home. Wives were crying because the husband stayed at home. And said, you go to church and the husband is dead. And, you know, husband is there. And the wife said, I'll stay at home and cooking. And the husband said, my wife is gone. Wow. Wow. Somebody said, did you feel the earthquake? Uh, when was it? A few days ago? About one o'clock in the morning. No, but I heard the dog barking. I never felt, but, you know, shops, I mean, stuff not fell from the shop. Shelving. God is shaking things up. I'm telling you, things are happening even in this so-called secure, safe, and probably the safest in the world. And yet, we are terrified. On television, young people were saying, a young man, I had to get up. And here were these young fellows at the window almost to get in. Terrified, because I got a young family to protect. Friends, nothing is safe. When I see all this, I say, better put a tent out and live. Nobody will come to rob you in your tent. Even that you never know. It's becoming so unsafe. Cameras, they're laughing at the cameras. What else do you need? Can I say to you, I'm for everybody having a gun. Yeah, at least you can self-defend yourself. I'm for that. I'm ready for that. You may say, why did they shoot you? Can't help either I get killed or you get killed. Now, we mustn't kill. I'm not, I don't want to kill anybody, but hey... I'm not going to let you take, come and take my head off. I know you're quiet on that, but that's Cedric. You just know 
who, am, who I am. The church had seen what forces of darkness could do. I believe the church had prayed for times of peace. And now they are saying, let's live in the fear of the Lord. Let's live in the fear of the Lord. That means they drew close to God. That means they were determined to live holy life. That means they lived serving the master. That means they lived a life of obedience. Glory to God. If we were to examine further what it means to live in the fear of the Lord, there's a whole leap you can find out. But the fear of the Lord is not a fright or terror of dread of the Lord, but a sense of reverence for His holiness and majesty and grace. I will serve Him because I love Him. Because I love Him. When we fear the Lord, we will want to live a life that is pleasing to Him. The Bible speaks of fear of the Lord some 295 times or verses alone. Scripture speaks of people fearing God from the law to the prophets to, you know, the, I mean the writings. It, from Genesis to Revelation, the fear of the Lord. In the Old Testament, 235 references uh, to fear God. New Testament, 43 times. So this is very interesting that caught my attention. The same amount where God says, fear the Lord, is when God says, love Him. In other words, you can't say, I love Him if I don't fear Him. Like the kids tell, I love you, mommy, I love, how much? This much. Will you go and eat your food? No, give it to the dogs. You love me? I won't eat. You know what it means. Sometimes we're like, I love you, God. Really? Really? You really love me? Just listen to God. I don't want to say what God may not be saying, but listen to what God would say. How many times I've tried to invite people to come to church? They would not. But come trouble, come calamity. The call comes. The call comes. Let's be careful. Let's serve Him because we love Him. Amen. Let's live in the fear of the Lord. And fourthly, they encouraged or they were encouraged by the Holy Spirit or walking in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. This great word, paracletos, called alongside to help, counselor. They walked in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. You remember in John chapter 14, Jesus was talking about his death and his disciples were troubled. And he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. But he went on to say that I'm going to send you another comforter. Not another of a different kind. Another of the same kind. That's the Greek word used there. Another of the same kind. All what I want to you, the Holy Spirit is going to be to you and even more. Because when they were in trouble, they could come and talk to Jesus. When they did not understand something, they could come and talk to Jesus. But Jesus is saying the Holy Spirit is going to be available in this fashion and this way and even in more ways. And they were excited about that. Because if you don't understand, he's going to give us understanding. If you don't know where to go, he will lead us and guide us. Hallelujah. He will give us visions and dreams. Wow. He will empower us. He will strengthen us. Let's unpack that. They walked in the fear of the Lord. They walked in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. When you walk in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, and you and I know that we need the comfort of the Holy Spirit, Hallelujah. Amen. We will be victorious. We have a guide. We have one who strengthens. We have one who empowers us. Today we are so prone of being compliant. If you went to Bunny yesterday, our people who were doing the sausage sizzle there, my goodness, so clean and so nice. Everybody with their caps on, with their gloves on. The sausages were so neatly arranged. The tray, right tray that Bunnings gave, that they should put a tissue inside there, serve the tray, not hold it with their hands. And my goodness me, compliant. We had letters from the council giving them, giving us a one-day permit to handle food. And, you know, uh, Bunnings wanted the, the, the insurance policy for public liability. And they had to make sure that the table is in the right place and not obstructed and all these, uh, you know, surrounding things that kind of protects the place and all that. Compliance! Somebody asked me, is the church compliant? I said, talk to Stephen. <laughs> Are we compliant with God? And I think God has allowed this to happen to search our own hearts and ask ourselves, Are we compliant with God? 
Are we complied with God? Are we at least worried if we are compliant with God? To be compliant means to do things in accordance with rules or standards that are approved. God's word is a proof standard for us. And no matter who we are, every one of us, from the least to the greatest, even the king has got cancer. Nobody's exempt from the troubles of this life. You may be the king or the queen. The rules are the same for everyone. Are we compliant with the word of God? Obedient to follow the instructions that are given for life. And for eternity. Oh, hallelujah. But what is exactly implied in walking in the comfort of the Holy Spirit? It means we won't be troubled as we walk because the Holy Spirit gives us counsel. It means we won't be timid because the Holy Spirit will give us courage and boldness. It means we won't be fearful because the Holy Spirit gives us confidence. It means we won't feel lost because the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us. It means we won't feel disconnected because the Holy Spirit connects us to God and connects us to one another. Hallelujah. It means we won't feel weak because the Holy Spirit will give us energy. He'll give us strength. He'll equip us. We won't feel left out. He'll equip us. When you say, I can't do it, God, I'll give it to you. Here are the gifts. Go and serve me. Go and serve me. And fifthly, the church continued to increase. That word, pletos, means to be made full, grow, increase, multiply, abound. Increase. 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 And multiply. Increase in number. That's exactly what happened. The increase in number, specifically, it is said there, there is a sense of fullness, a feeling of satisfaction and content. Robertson says, uh, commenting on the imperfect tense, the multiplication of the disciples kept pace with the peace, the edification, the walking in the fear of the Lord, and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. These were things that preceded. If you don't enjoy peace, there is no increase. Nobody wants to come to a sad church. Nobody wants to keep company with a morose person all the time. No. We can encourage them and bring them, but you'll not stay for long. We must enjoy Jesus. Amen. We must have joy. If we don't edify each other, there is no increase because, hey, we've got all kinds of people coming to the church, but we are here to, to edify, to pray with, to counsel, to speak a word of encouragement. Not, did you hear that message, what that fellow said today? What did he say? Oh, I don't believe that. Keep your belief to yourself. Go start a church by yourself. Come and talk to me. Let's examine the word together. Edify. Be a good word. So good to see you, brother. God has a plan for your life. Yeah, is that a prophecy? Yes, he's going to use you. How do I know that? Because the Word of God says. Oh, not that God spoke to you. God spoke to me through the Word. That's for you, for everyone. Oh, sister, God spoke to me. You're going to get married. Yeah, I'm ready to get married. God said you must get married. Somebody don't have to come and tell me I'm going to get married. I want to, if you want to get married, you just pray God will give you a partner. Oh, brother, God is going to use you. Yeah, you say God is going to use you. How do you know? Is God telling you God is going to use me? God has said it in his word. Mm. Prophets don't have to tell you God is going to use you. Oh, Prophet Cedric said God is going to use me. Nobody told me God is going to use me. I sought God and followed his word, and I knew God wants to use me. I just have to yield. The more I yield to God, the more God used me. The more you yield to God, the more God will use you. God has given his word. Now, prophecy is interesting because it's to edify one another in the body of Christ. Because some people, no matter what God says, they will not listen. You know, and so God has to bring a word. Thus you the Lord. I don't like what you're doing. Really? Oh, God is speaking to my heart. But God has said it in his word. When we're disobedient, God comes forcefully. Thus you the Lord. And we think, wow, I'm having goosebumps. Because 
Brother Steve wants to say, thus saith the Lord. The thus saith the Lord has been there for ancient of days. And they haven't paid attention. Pay attention to God's word. Pay attention to God's word. Now prophecy is good. I like prophecy. I prophesied. I prophesied this morning over people. I had to call Ramon and prophesy over him this morning. I like that. But he already knows what God is saying. Just to encourage. I don't know the Holy Ghost came upon me. I did the communion in a different way. Doesn't mean I'm going to do the same thing here. But because God asked me to do it in that way. It was a great blessing. It released something. Released something. If we don't edify each other, there is no increase. If we don't walk in the fear of the Lord, there is no increase. If we don't walk in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, there is no increase. Deuteronomy 16, 15 says, The Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thine increase and in all the work of thy hand. That's powerful. Because what's the big idea of having increase if there's no favor? If there's no favor, there's no blessing. Somebody was complaining that they had to sell everything and put it into the business and lost everything. Everything they lost. There's no favor. Your money will never. One time, you know, I got Mali, my fault, with my cousin to get involved into the business. 15,000 loan, you know. She took 15,000, my cousin took 15,000. And, uh, you know, the business was not making money. I said, well, if you had to pay it now, close the business and we'll pay it. But we prayed. She said, God, we've been foolish. We've been foolish. And, uh, you know, when always I act foolish, I said, God, you know, I'm a little boy. Yeah, I know that story again and again. You come with a sook story. I said, God, help us in this. Please help us in this. Somebody else came and bought our share, $15,000. Thought that Mali was not doing a good job. In a few months' time, the business closed and they lost everything. So you're happy about that, Cedric? No, because I fear God. He saved me. If they feared God, they wouldn't have got into trouble too. The righteous man's parts are ordered by the Lord. Nobody can rip us off. Nobody can rip us off. If you've got the favor of God, that's what we are told here. The Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thy increase. We want the blessing in all our increase. Amen. Exodus 36 verse 11 says, And I will multiply upon you man and beast. They shall increase and bring fruit. And I will settle you after your old estate. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 30 verse 16 says, For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to Him and keep His commands, decree and laws, then you will live and increase and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are to enter and possess. Isaiah 40, 29, He gives strength to the weary and increase the power of the weak so the weak can say, I am strong. And the poor can say, I am rich because of Him. Ecclesiastes 1, verse 18 says, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. God wants to increase us. God wants to increase us. God wants to increase us. This morning, I don't know in what area of your life you're saying, God, I need increase. Interestingly, in fact, all who came to the altar for, at Clayton, I want to increase in my relationship with God. Oh, I want to get closer to God. Every one of them, increase, increase, increase. And when they brought their increase request, I'm telling you, you asked the people who were at Clayton this morning, the power of God hit them. That I took the microphone, I said, come on. You know, I mean, usually people with the hands lifted up. Worshipping God, praising God. I like the moments like that. And somehow Clayton has that atmosphere that, I don't know, you know, you say something, I mean, you take a stone and raise up, God's power just falls down. I, it's something. I mean, I literally saw, you know, the figure of Jesus one day, an outline of Jesus standing there, and I kind of froze. What about Malgrave? Yeah, we have that here too. But there's something special. But if you're saying, I need to increase my relationship with God, 
I need to increase in my relationship with my spouse. I need to increase. I want God to increase upon my life, my finances, my physical well-being. God, increase. Increase the energy. Feel fatigue. There's no strength. Oh, Jesus, I need to increase. I need to increase. Would you stand with me in his presence right now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we do that song, Dinali, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. God, increase, 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 increase. As we sing this wonderful song, if you're sensing that you need to increase, I want you to step to the front. Lift up your hands towards heaven and say, God, I feel depleted. Oh, my God, I want to increase in my relationship with you. I want to increase in my relationship with my fellow brothers and sisters. I want to increase in my family, in my work, in my health, oh, God. Increase, increase, increase. God is for increase. God is for increase. We are going to pray for the increase in numbers. But that's what God quickened to my heart. And we're going to see it. Get ready. Say, God, I want to increase that capability, the ability to be a witness. I want to increase. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
me close to you. Never let me go. I know it down, down again. To hear you say. the warmth of your Bye. 
was accomplished for us that we may increase hallelujah you became poor that we might be enriched John said I must decrease and you must increase Jesus you said if I be lifted up I will draw all men unto me and you were raised upon that cross to draw us because Lord you are showing us right now what you accomplished for us we will not be cheated. We will not be deceived or robbed by the enemy. God, we thank you for what your cross has accomplished for us this morning. For increase. Press the emblems as we partake together. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it and he said, This is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat. Press it together, church. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Take and drink. Let's drink together. Thank you, Jesus.
watching and waiting. 